This video is sponsored by Qualcomm Technologies, Inc. I did a couple of videos a while back talking about Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, but now there's a new version of Wi-Fi and we're already starting to see it pop up on various routers and devices called Wi-Fi 7. And if all of these numbers of Wi-Fi are confusing you, I promise you're not alone. So in this decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, let's talk about what Wi-Fi 7 is, what's the difference between Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, and what the real world benefits are. And first, Let's start with the name. Wi-Fi 7 is part of a relatively new naming structure from the Wi-Fi Alliance, the industry body that tests and certifies Wi-Fi products to help people understand the different Wi-Fi standards. Wi-Fi 7 is the name now for 802.11be, where 6e was the name for 802.11ax extension, and 6 was 802.11ax, and so on and so on. Okay, a quick recap of some of the more important features in Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, as they're here in Wi-Fi 7, but they've been improved upon. Now, if you want a full breakdown of all of these, I've left links below to the what is Wi-Fi 6 and what is Wi-Fi 6E videos that I did. But for this video, we'll quickly touch on the ones that are important for Wi-Fi 7. First, we have MU MIMO, which stands for multiple user, multiple input, multiple output, and allows multiple clients on the network to send and receive data at the same time, up to eight at once in Wi-Fi 6. Then we have OFDMA, or orthogonal frequency division multiple access, to allow for more devices to each receive and send data per transmission. As this allows each packet being sent out on the network to contain data for multiple clients instead of having to send one out per client. Then we have 1024 QAM to allow more data to be sent per packet, and it translates to about 25% faster data transfers in Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5. Then there's target wake time to reduce unnecessary network transmissions by having devices specify when they'll be awake and transmit versus sleep and not, which then frees up bandwidth for more important data instead. And WPA3, the latest security protocol. And then Wi-Fi 6E just added much needed spectrum in the form of the 6 gigahertz band. Now before 6E, your Wi-Fi network would use one or both bands, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Sometimes your router would even display these as two separate networks, but nowadays most newer routers will keep the network name the same and automatically decide which band to use for which device. The difference between these bands, for the most part, is that 2.4 gigahertz has a lower top speed of about 0.8 gigabits per second, but further range, and 5 gigahertz has a higher top speed of about 2.8 gigabits per second, a lower range, and it just isn't as good at penetrating walls and objects. Wi-Fi 6E added the much less used 6 gigahertz into the mix as well, thanks to the FCC freeing that up for Wi-Fi use not too long ago. Now that essentially quadruples the amount of bandwidth that Wi-Fi devices can use, as it adds 14 additional 80 megahertz channels and seven additional 160 megahertz channels. And while these are the same size channels as five gigahertz, and that's why you have the same theoretical max speeds, you can still get much faster actual speeds than five gigahertz in most cases, simply because these new channels just have way less congestion on them which also means that you'll get much better latency on 6 gigahertz as well. Congestion and latency on Wi-Fi channels is what causes those drops in speed, as well as issues with your buffering in videos, frame rate drops in games, and dropped Zoom meetings. And with that, how does Wi-Fi 7 differ from Wi-Fi 6 and 6E? Well, Wi-Fi 7 has a lot of the same features with some improvements to them, but then it also adds some super useful new features as well. Firstly, we have all of the features I mentioned for Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, but for MU MIMO, Wi-Fi 7 has 16 streams available versus the eight. So more devices can communicate at once, which means faster speed and less latency. The 1024 QAM has now been updated to 4K QAM, which just means even more data is being sent per packet, which alone increases speeds by about 20% as well. We also have the six gigahertz band from 6 E, but within 6E, the widest channel supported was 160 megahertz. In Wi-Fi 7, that is doubled to 320 megahertz. The larger the channel, the more data it can transmit at a time, so more speed. All of that allows for more speed, lower latency, and better reliability. But 
this new feature that I'm kind of excited about does even more for that. And it's called MLO or multi-link operation. Now this feature, again, new to Wi-Fi 7, allows the router and devices to combine all of the frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz together into a single connection. Now before Wi-Fi 7, devices used to have to connect to one of these bands at a time on a fixed channel within that band. Now a device can send and receive data on 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz all at the same time, potentially meaning much wider channels, allowing them to transmit even more data, but also it can adjust what channels and what bands it's using to get the higher speed, lower latency, and better reliability dodging interference automatically. So clever. Now the idea is that this will not only start to boost speeds, lower latency, and increase reliability as mentioned, but it's also starting to prepare us for this future of over one gigabit per second fiber optic networks that are starting to roll out. I have two gigabit per second fiber optic network in my apartment now and was told by Fios, the company that installed it, that five and 10 gigabit plans are coming soon. Wi-Fi 6E was basically necessary to see anything over one gigabit per second consistently wirelessly. And now Wi-Fi 7 is necessary to have the wireless experiences match those even higher higher incoming speeds wirelessly. Qualcomm has also recently announced their own Qualcomm 10 gig fiber gateway platform to be used in modems and routers that is purpose built for 10 gigabit per second fiber broadband to be able to provide 10 gigabit per second performance to and throughout the home. It not only has architecture that's flexible and scalable for broadband providers to offer 10 gig passive optical network technologies and 10 gigabit per second ethernet, but it also has built in support for open source software and middleware to enable a ton of new smart home applications powered by those new speeds and lower latency that will just come with 10 gigabit per second fiber broadband. I was so excited when I got two gigabit per second speeds in my apartment. I cannot wait for 10 gigabits per second. Okay, so what are the downsides to Wi-Fi 7? Well, again, the six gigahertz frequency doesn't reach as far and it's not as good as penetrating objects and walls as five gigahertz is and even more so than 2.4 gigahertz. But that's the same issue we had with Wi-Fi 6E. And it just means that for the very best speeds, you'll probably wanna go for a mesh system as you'll need more nodes to cover as much of your space as possible in that fastest six gigahertz band. Another downside, is the same with all new technology, price. Wi-Fi 7 router systems are generally a little bit more expensive than Wi-Fi 6 and 6E. Although, even at the time of making this video, I've seen a ton of Wi-Fi 7 systems out there that are not much more expensive, and some even on comparable levels of pricing for some of the current Wi-Fi 6 and 6E routers out there. I'll leave links below though to all of the ones that I have found if you're curious in the description below. Now the router I'm using here in this video is the TP-Link Deco BE33000 with Qualcomm's Networking Pro 1620 platform inside, which enables quad band Wi-Fi 7 instead of just tri-band. So we have 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz, and then two six gigahertz channels, which means that you can use one as a dedicated backhaul between the two mesh nodes for a super fast connection for the data between them and still have all three bands available from each node for client devices. I'll leave a link below again, if you're curious about this router. And lastly is availability. You will need a Wi-Fi 7 capable router and Wi-Fi 7 capable devices like laptops and phones, et cetera, in order to take advantage of all of the features of Wi-Fi 7. You can't just update your stuff to get that. But already we're starting to see devices come with Qualcomm's Fast Connect 7800 with Wi-Fi 7 and high band simultaneous multi-link, which allows devices to combine two five gigahertz or two six gigahertz bands together to achieve up to 5.8 gigabit per second speeds and much lower latency. And it's especially important, honestly, in regions that haven't added six gigahertz yet. So combining two five gigahertz bands can get you much faster speeds. Devices like the Xiaomi 13 Pro, the OnePlus 11, the Xperia 1.5, the Motorola Edge Plus, and more. And I'm sure we'll see it more and more in other flagship devices down the road. Okay, and there you go. If you want to learn more about what Qualcomm is doing with Wi-Fi 7, check them out at the link below. Also, let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you enjoyed it, I always appreciate hearing from you guys. Also, check out the rest of the Decoder series. Did a bunch of other explainer videos and the real world test series that I do here on the channel where we explore while we test out a device. Also, if you're not already, please subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified when I do new videos. But all right, after all this, I think I'm going to actually start Googling when 10 gigabit per second internet is going to arrive at my apartment. Good night.